Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Henry. I work for uh, Metallurgic Support and uh, today I'm going to have a few words on uh, journaling and journaling feature uh, in Exchange. Uh, I hope uh, all you can hear me uh, loud and clear and uh, so let's start. Uh, today I'm going to talk about journal and journaling mailbox from two basics, basic perspectives and uh, one would be uh, journaling as a Microsoft Exchange feature and uh, other other perspectives are going to be uh, best practices uh, using uh, Archive Manager Exchange Edition. So uh, let's go to the next slide. So what, what is Journal Mailbox? Uh, basically it's it's the, the regular mailbox which uh, which can uh, which can record all the communication uh, inside the company incoming outcoming emails uh, you can apply uh, many filters to it. Uh, you can set up uh, different transport rules, so it allows you to to have some some flexibility uh, using uh, or you know making a purpose for that uh, for that mailbox. Uh, you know maybe uh, interesting thing uh, or beside email communication, uh, this can uh, this can contain also even uh, fax, telephone conversations, and voicemails. So uh, yeah, we basic summary for what what the what the journal is. Uh, there are there are two types there are two types of uh, of uh, journal mailbox. First one is a uh, regular uh, is standard journaling, uh, which uh, which is basically recording all the incoming and the outgoing uh, outgoing communications. Um, this this is being set up on a database level. So um, if you want to journal all the mailboxes or all the users, <clears throat> you need to set up um, a journal mailbox against each each database. So um, uh, you know so you can uh, you can reject actually all the all the mailboxes, all the accounts. And uh, other other part uh, uh, of journaling is premium journaling. Uh, this actually allows you for a more flexible approach where you can decide on uh, which users, which accounts you're going to journal and maybe you have uh, some groups uh, which you want to, which you want to uh, leave from the, from the being um, journaled. So, uh, but this feature actually uh, requests or requires a special, special licensing called CAL, Client Access License. So that's two types. And uh, now, key aspects of uh, journal rules. Uh, what? Well, these are basic uh, basic definitions for the or settings for the journal journaling itself. Uh, first one is journal scope. Uh, that means uh, what actually you plan to journal. Uh, you may want to archive or uh, journal only outgoing messages. You can uh, you can decide only for incoming messages. Maybe you want to journal messages of certain size or uh, you know some some other other settings for the for the scope. Then you can define a journal recipient means uh, where uh, which which accounts which uh, SMTP addresses you want to want to um, journal. And the last one is journaling mailbox. This actually defines or creates a mailbox which. Um, which gather all the all the journal information. Uh, obviously, you can have more more journal mailbox. For example, for each database, or maybe you can have a journal mailbox for 2010, other one for 2013. So uh, you know that that defines a journal mailbox where where the, all the communication goes. Uh, also, there is a another type of uh, journal mailbox. Uh, it's called alternate journal mailbox. And basically, this is being used when, um, for some reason, uh, your journal mailbox is not accessible either for, e either for some system, maybe network outage or um, some system uh, performance or something. So, in that case, um, there is a there is a non delivery non delivery report feature on the exchange, <clears throat> which is generating uh, reports on the over over. Over communications that go through the network, and uh, this uh, this um, re reporting actually delivers messages such as uh, 
you know, message was not delivered or, um, uh, you know, there were some problems de delivering messages at ETC. So by the time journal, journal is unavailable, you can use this feature um, uh, as a, uh, you know, sort of, sort of a journal where inside the delivery report the message is going to be actually the journal uh, message. So that's an alternative to a regular mailbox. All right, uh, interoperability with Exchange 2007. The uh, good news is that um, uh, usually, or actually all the, all the journal, um, all the exchange servers have uh, this uh, feature and uh, it's compatible among the versions. However, since um, version uh, Exchange 2010, um, there is slight uh, difference on uh, approaching uh, approaching uh, uh, setting up setting up the journal. And uh, well, it works like um, once you create a rule um, in um, uh, Exchange uh, 2010, I mean, once you set up um, journaling on Exchange 2010, it actually copied copies uh, settings you already have placed on your Exchange 2007 server, if applicable. And uh, uh, well, uh, it works even opposite way. However, you need to manually manually change or update uh, settings in uh, 2007 version. So uh, that's related to um, interoperability. Let's go to next slide. All right. Now uh, the second point of view would be uh, how, how we, uh, how uh, archive manager does perceive uh, metallogics, uh, uh, meta, I mean the journal mailbox. So uh, let's continue. Um, well, there are a few, few few things you need to have in mind when um, setting up. Uh, archive for the journal mailbox and when archiving journal mailbox, uh, probably the most important one is that um, by its nature the journal mailbox is getting uh, you know in a huge size uh, in a, in time as it's uh, uh, archiving or recording uh, messages from all, all around the company. You know this this mailbox is actually growing in uh, big big numbers on daily basis. So you know this is something administrator needs to. Uh, have in mind, and as such, um, you know there are a few points to to have uh, uh, to consider. One would be search performance. Um, when you when you when you search inside the enterprise manager, uh, I would not suggest uh, using a mail or archive view for the for the journal. The reason why is that the enterprise manager uh, enterprise manager is um, actually caching up the all the full content of the mailbox to show so even though you want to search for one specific email let's say from the 1st January 2010 uh, the manager will attempt to cache all the all the messages all the emails from the mailbox which obviously will uh, will uh, put system on the you know can can create a clock and uh, you know system may may become unresponsive so uh, that's why Generally, do not use archive or mail view in the enterprise manager. Rather, rather you should be using um, Arc um, Advanced Search. Uh, that's a little a little magnifier icon on the top. Advanced Search, where you where you select or define email or set of emails you're looking for, and let the search do the job. So that would be that would be re related to search performance. Other one, uh, direct archive feature. Uh, many times customer use this feature. Uh, first off, this feature is actually supported by Exchange 2003 or 7. So uh, the later, latest uh, Exchange version doesn't support it. However, there are still some customers with the old Exchange servers. But uh, we generally advise them to be, be careful using this, uh, using this feature. The reason why is that the Direct Archive is uh, highly demanding, demanding for the system resources. Uh, e e either for RAM or CPU. So uh, uh, yes, customers can use that, but uh, they really need to make sure they have sufficient uh, RAM and CPU, and uh, the increased increased consumption will not have uh, a negative impact on other parts of the server, other applications they have on the server. 
Uh, also, uh, there is uh, another another point uh, is to allow enough time for journal job jo for journal job to complete archiving round. This means that uh, uh, you set up a journal job to run every once in a while. Uh, the thing is, or trick is, uh, you really should leave this job do its job until it's finished, and uh, start the next round after after first round is done. Uh, what I mean by this, uh, you know, sometimes uh, customers tend to, you know, limit to limit the time they set for the job. So, um, you know, they want to job to uh, uh, accomplish its job uh, as soon as possible. However, it doesn't work that way. So, uh, you can uh, shortly you can get into a sort of a loop where where emails not all the emails get archived from the first round and or you, the job is starting for the second round which is actually pushing the unarchived emails in front so uh, uh, the best uh, best practice for this uh, would be setting up the job uh, journal job to run not not less than uh, 180 minutes so let's see um, also uh, in journal uh, we can imagine that uh, you know we are to, in a journal mailbox. We are talking about ten t tens of thousands of emails, even hundreds of thousands of emails. So you know this is really this is really demanding on the on the I would say structure or the logic that uh, that is being uh, used when uh, working with this uh, with this uh, mailbox. Uh, by Microsoft, uh, there are some limitations that applies for the, you know, in the, let's say, in the Windows Explorer, there are certain amount, certain number of limit of, of items that uh, actually makes the logic, logic, logical structure b being written on a disk. So uh, there are some limitations on how many files you can have in the in the folder. Otherwise, this may have a negative impact on the listing these items, uh, searching that items, and um, you know system stability. And very same, very same uh, rule or uh, applies or is similar with the with the mailbox uh, feature, where if you have uh, hundreds of thousands of emails, you know this this makes uh, hard life for administrator for to you know do anything with that job, either copying, uh, moving, or uh, searching inside. So uh, very easy advice. Very easy advice. Uh, we, we do, or we uh, we uh, we advise customers is to create a m more uh, journal mailbox. Let's say journal two, journal three, or uh, journal mailbox 2013. So for each year, so they can actually easily distinguish what is inside the journal, and um, you know they can easily work with uh, with uh, such a huge uh, structure. Um, very similar applies when exporting from a journal mailbox. You can have a, you can have a need uh, to export journal mailbox uh, either for one user or for a whole company. Uh, thing is that uh, it, we prefer using uh, to or creating uh, multiple files instead of creating one huge PST file that represents a journal mailbox. Uh, huge files are uh, I would say uh, um, more easily get corrupted. You know, when you have a file which is uh, hundreds of gigabytes of size, very likely it may get corrupted by uh, copying it, reading it, writing into it. So uh, uh, we would suggest then, uh, when exporting journal, again distinguish it by either let's say journal for the year, let's say uh, journal for 2013 or or um, Exporting into a specific account, specific user. So you know, just just to avoid uh, using the one one huge file. All right. Uh, next next point would be uh, best practice for the for the archiving settings on the on the journal. And uh, again, from its nature, uh, we do not need to. You know, the, the journal mailbox is not designed. For a user using it on a regular or daily basis by uh, using and uh, opening up shortcuts, this means that uh, what we need from journal we need to have we need it to be archived on, in the store, but we really don't need shortcuts being present as we you know 
neither neither administrator nor users use those shortcuts. So uh, we can save up some space on the exchange level on the exchange server when we decide to uh, delete original email. Uh, let me show you the settings right here. So in the under retention retention setting, you choose delete original email, which uh, archives the email, keeps the copy of the email in the store, but no shortcut is created. So that would be regarding to um, retention setting. All right. Uh, other other issue. Uh, I already mentioned that uh, search may be a little bit tricky. I mean, searching uh, searching uh, journal mailbox. So for this, uh, you can uh, you can think of uh, changing setting either temporarily or or um, you know to or infinite uh, setting it to. Uh, unlimited timeout. Uh, e even though it's not recommended, I mean you can reward the setting anytime after you do your search. But the thing is that uh, this way you avoid uh, you know, timeout errors, which which are likely to happen when you know searching uh, huge uh, numbers. Or you can specify timeout, let's say 10 minutes, which would be a uh, which would be a reasonable amount of time. So uh, that's that's for the search settings. Uh, also, many times uh, customers, even though they import journal mailbox from the exchange and do archive it, they forget to mark it or um, set it as a journal mailbox. This is being done in address book manager under uh, mailbox properties. And um, once you click the mailbox properties, first tab, uh, you have uh, you have two types basically of uh, two types of mailbox. It's uh, it, either regular, normal mailbox and or uh, journal mailbox. So do not forget to switch uh, or set this as this switch is actually creating a sort of a record uh, on the SQL level and uh, as an outcome it uh, I would say uh, synchronize or, or uh, it's it's actually tuning up the performance of the journaling itself on the SQL level so at, at the end you will get a better performance on uh, archiving uh, journal mailbox. So, uh, yeah, few remarks on the end. Uh, really, you, what you should have in your mind related to journaling mailbox, both on the exchange level, on exchange server level, and on the enterprise manager level, is that uh, for, for the journal mailbox, you really need to, you know, increase uh, security. And uh, because the, the mailbox contains uh, the sensitive data, uh, you should think of restricting access. Who, who, everything, who, who is going to have access to that mailbox? Who is going to have deletion rights? What are the deletion rights? Uh, storage, where are we going to store it? Uh, how, how the storage is going to be backed up? Uh, what retention we're going to have? And uh, you know, so this is something you really need to have in mind. And a few last points. Uh, when searching a journal, uh, the journal email is actually an empty email uh, which has an attachment. And this attachment is a copy of the email being journal. So for that, you know, for that reason, uh, all the emails inside, when you look in the journal mailbox, all the emails look like the same because they are empty emails but with an attachment. So, uh, in other in other words, all, all the emails will have very same very same um, subject, uh, differentiated by the username or the mailbox for which is being journaled. So, you you should have this in mind when searching for emails uh, for specific people. Uh, you really will have hard time searching by subject, but when you put in a name, a username uh, in the in the subject. Uh, Subject uh, field, you should have, you should get some uh, reasonable uh, outcome. And related uh, journal migration, um, we can archive. Actually, the journal mailbox is the only only mailbox we can migrate to cloud uh, Office 365. So um, uh, you you can have customers which uh, which are asking, uh, okay, all right, uh, we plan to migrate uh, to cloud. Uh, what we can migrate? Everything we can help with is journal mailbox, where they do have all the all the communication from uh, in incoming, outcoming communication, uh, even even other. And uh, well, we can migrate this one to cloud. However, uh, the cloud itself does not support 
journaling for Office 365. So yes, you can you can uh, um, export uh, emails into cloud, but uh, not with the purpose of continuing journaling journaling uh, feature. You can you can export there all the all the messages from the mailboxes and having users use those, but uh, not not for a journal. All right, so uh, that was uh, all for my side. And uh, uh, is there anyone having questions? Oh yeah, I can see your question. Uh, if uh, if um, the type of mailbox can be changed anytime, yes, it can be, and and also it will apply retrospectively. So you, if you've been um, archiving a journal mailbox with the with the setting of a regular mailbox, uh, this will actually apply retrospectively, and uh, all the all the new archiving since then will take uh, um, you know will apply since that day. And uh, you should have uh, some some better performance afterwards. All right. Uh, any other questions? All right then. So I thank you for your attendance, and uh, we should have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.